This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, even though I may not sound like it tonight. We are live from the Beach View Studio, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to celebrate the world of professional wrestling here. Uh, we have a hell of a crew with us tonight. Uh, first of us, uh, first of all, on the line from Monroeville, PA, is The Riz. And just so you know, I am dressed as the Broken Brawler. Is that what you know, you're what doing? Is, is it like all That's torn up doing. underneath? You'll never know. Sir. I'll never know. You just kind of leave that to imagination. Mm-hmm. He's the Brooklyn brawler with no pants. Because that's what that's what the that's what this that's what the Halloween is. It's it's your imagination, sort your imagination you and no anything pants. Anything you want. Anything you want. <laughs> and also, Happy Rusev Day. Happy Rusev Day. Let me make sure this is turned up. There we are. And also, there he is. There he is. He is from Poughkeepsie, New York. He is Mad Mike. Poughkeepsie, New York, by the way of Andy's Playroom. Oh, geez. How- howdy. Howdy, everyone. Oh, geez. Straight howdy, out. Howdy, howdy. Straight out of work. I've seen your pictures. So I had a little preview of what you were doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who follow, who are friends with me personally on Facebook, you've already seen this. I apologize. You've probably seen it a bit too much. Mm. But for those of you who haven't, you're my favorite deputy. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Uh, thank you for joining us here, Mad Mike. And, of course, we got plenty of people in the studio as well. First of all, Larry Mysterio Jr. is with us tonight. Hola. Hola. <laughs> how much, how much it's, Spanish it's do you actually Korea. know? That's about it. How much Spanish <laughs> do you learn in, that, in Michigan? That's about it. No, that's Unless it? Unless they're playing something out of a Taco Bell commercial. Oh, geez. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Larry. That's all I got. And man. also <laughs> with us... Dressed as a normal person today is the professional wrestler, the Reaper, Matt Connor, joining us. Sorg, if I could just say before we get off topic, you kind of sound like Casey Kasem if his balls ever dropped. Oh. Uh, yes! <laughs> oh my God, Sorg, can you just count down things? Count down. <laughs> Number 15 in the top countdown. Oh my God, that's amazing. Sorg, Sorg. You should immediately record a tape and send it to WWE to host their Music Power 15. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's not going to last. It's, it's, well, I hope this doesn't last. It, it if I'm stuck matter. like this, they're going to have some problems. It doesn't matter. Sorg, it's, it's, a, it's an official radio voice. Is it an official radio voice? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a my, my throat is jacked up voice. I can't. I can't wait to hear you throw out the number to call us because it's going to sound like an actual. Commercial. Well, let's see how that goes. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch us on WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Podcast. You can also check out the video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or four one two two zero six WMS zero. <laughs> it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's i'm actually gonna call it now i'm actually you're gonna actually call gonna call it. it you get us on twitter at mayhem show you can follow our facebook group for the wrestling mayhem show where there's a lot of great discussion going on over there and you can join us live every tuesday at 10 p.m eastern time shortcut live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com but we are streaming on our youtube page our facebook page for wrestling mayhem show as well as sorgatron media on twitch tv and the mayhem show periscope page but most of that chat room is happening over on the facebook page so we hope you can join the big conversation right there um i just moved my page so i don't know what's next because i only have it on my phone hey i want to give a shout out no never mind it's the end of the month hey you got a few hours if you're hitting <laughs> us up left la- yeah you have a few hours if you're hitting us up live occupy pro wrestling.com every uh all proceeds are going to go to uh from from the occupy pro wrestling store some great t-shirts over to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Um, 
or if you get it after this, just tell him you want to donate it anyway. So or I'm sure he'll oblige. Uh, but anyways, and um, also uh, supporting our friends. Uh, thank you, everybody that supports us on the Patreon. Uh, you guys are literally helping us uh, 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 keep the lights on and in funny hats and sometimes cough medicine for me so I can get through this show. Uh, first of all, thanks to our friends that at the dollar fan of the show level, including... Oh, shit. Bo! <laughs> Bo diggity! Woo! Oh, I forgot about that part. Oh, that was okay. Um, Ed Burke and Bobby of J Town, and our friends at the five dollar Pocky Club level. Those guys get Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold, where Mike first discovered my interesting voice for tonight, and we asked mm-hmm. Matt Connor what he does sure. for Halloween. Um, <laughs> that like Todd Grisham. Todd Grisham. Oh, yeah. come on. Be oh, nice. come on. No, no, I like Todd Grisham. Okay. Oh, I, I, that's a compliment. Thank you. Uh, thank you to our friends at Pocky Club, uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling, Tina Keys, and Christopher Bishop. And at the $10 Pizza Club level, he gets a uh, state of the show, which I should probably record while I'm still in this voice, huh? Bobby F. and Johnson. Uh, thank you, everybody. And also, we do we also have the $20 manager level. Uh, where you can get special listing on the show notes as well as receive a special digital download monthly from our partner, IndieWrestling.us. Oh, I think I made and it through you, it, guys. And if you, if you prefer, we will call you by whatever wrestling manager nickname you prefer. Yeah, yeah. So you, if, you've, if you've always wanted to be known as the mouth of the South, we can do that for you. I feel like that has a different connotation these days. Okay. Exactly. Um, then no, no. I, feel, no, I mean, if it, like if you're just like, I feel like if you wore a mouth of the how about, south. How about, how about the doctor of desire? Okay, mm-hmm. that makes a little more. I guess. How about like Mike? If you're you're at that level, you can be the first lady of professional wrestling. Yes, I like it. Okay, good. I like it. And even if you're a dude, because 2017 gender is fluid, y'all. <laughs> However, you self-identify. <laughs> Right. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Anyways, moving on quickly from that topic. Uh, so, uh, you know, thank hey, you for the 405 Media. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks to our streaming partners, the 405 mediacom who for some reason carry this show uh, and 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 stream us uh, seven days a week Especially at 9 p.m. Pacific time. It's uh, for all those hot political takes, like that. midnight Eastern hot political takes, like Hashtag that. PMS. Oh, geez. Um, so I, I, I wanted to talk some Halloween stuff here, uh, briefly, cause, um, since I was kind of bedridden for a little today, if you can't tell, uh, I caught up on a little bit of Halloween Havoc. That's the wrong shot. What the <laughs> hell? Um, and, and including the Chamber of Horrors match. Mm-hmm. Have you Why got, did, mm, sword, no wonder I, you're not feeling better. I, Why I, did you do that? <laughs> it was fantastically horrible. It was like, it was like every, like, like, like 10 man tag. That breaks down I've ever seen on the indies. It was it was pretty pretty great. Um, That's a pretty apt description of it. Is it? Yeah, I mean it, it does. It, it, it and even even like the uh, the lever that they always make fun of. It it was like in the lower position like early in the match. Oh yeah. Oh no, that thing mm-hmm. didn't stay up the entire match. No, no, it was pretty horrible. Um, also, the ring caught on fire. Yes, of course it did. So, well, I mean, it's WCW. It's not like they protected people. I, I feel like I feel like I don't think anybody leaned into Halloween as much as WCW did, right? Definitely. I mean, they were just like that. There was the Hall. I, I watched that the the, the 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 Halloween Phantom, which apparently I, I did some reading afterwards, and it turned out to be Rick Rude, um, which I've never. They had a, they had a wrestler who was a mummy sword. There was a oh wait, wait it was he a mummy the or yete. was the Yeti? The Yeti. The Yeti. 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 Yeah. So uh, who guys, then, who guys, then they had next Chucky month, and Robocop. Well, they did have Robocop too. That wasn't even they had Halloween. Chucky. Though. Robocop. Chucky, jeez. Oh, yeah, that did happen. Um so I, I you know, kinda going into it, just like kinda like what are your favorite kind of like Halloween moments of wrestling over the years? Like I we had uh, I mean even just this this week we had uh, uh probably the best and Missy gets the call for this about somebody coming out dresses their southern uh uh, their uh, southern uh, Southpaw. Southpaw wrestling, Southpaw, Southpaw regional wrestling, Southpaw regional wrestling characters with Chad Too Bad and uh, the other guy, Tex Ferguson. Tex Tex Ferguson, Ferguson. Thank you. Ferguson. Last night, um, it feels like they were more uh, Halloweeny on on Raw than they were tonight on SmackDown. Well, yeah, it's because they booked a two out of three on. falls match and they booked a uh, an Orton versus um, uh, Owens match or Nakamura versus Owens match. Mm-hmm. No. 
So I mean, and uh, if you're, for everybody, two hundred five lives going on right now, and there's a four way match with all of the pumpkins. What? what? Oh, good, good. Like, okay. Pumpkins are in the ring. What do you mean, all the is, pumpkins? Is Lindsay Dorado a part of it, and is he dressed as a black cat? Uh, no. Fuck. But uh, Grand Metal, <sighs> Grand Metal League is in it. Uh, I'm never gonna get a Kitty Cat Man match. Sword. No, you're never gonna get that again. <laughs> never gonna get it again. And would... it's freaky because all the pumpkins are turned towards the hard cam, and they're oh. all just staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chick is completely freaked out by the pumpkins. Well, Larry, aren't you, why aren't you keeping us updated on this? Uh, I forgot my headphones. Oh, okay. And my peripheral vision is garbage right now. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know how he yeah, so he's wearing thing. if you couldn't tell he's wearing a Rey Mysterio mask I, I think it's a child's uh, Rey Mysterio mask actually uh, but uh, he, you're, you're, he, the first thing he says is how does he wrestle this well I, I mean I, no, you, I, have I, to, I, you have to remember the, the mask that he wears isn't plastic not always yeah well, I mean imagine the eye holes aren't much and, bigger though and it actually wraps around his head maybe I don't know. Uh, not always. Like it's, he still has that kind of opening thing, kind of going on these days, doesn't he? That's true. But um, I mean, now he's tra- now he's trapped in a cage, possibly for all time. So we may never see him again. <laughs> yeah, there's that too. Um, when he's spoilers. Not... <laughs> what if you haven't caught up to the end of Lucha Underground? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, he's just stuck in a cage. Despite all his rage, he's still a ray in a cage. Oh no! Oh <laughs> so... no! So oh. Brian Cage ate him? Uh no, not that cage, an actual cage. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad because like anytime he's at an indie show now, there's probably people yelling, How did you get out of that cage? That would be the first thing I'd ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Like like was was there a poster of Stacey Keebler that you dug out using a uh pickaxe? What? That's that's a Shawshank Redemption reference, fellas. Wrestling. Let's see you there, fussy britches. Wrestling sword. Wrestling. Oh, jeez. Yes. Back to Halloween and wrestling sword. Yes. Yes. Uh, T- Tina, Tina's chiming here from the chat room. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Now, okay. I watched. I never watched this Halloween Havoc until <laughs> today. And I watched the uh, the Cactus Jack Invader. Was the entire Halloween Havoc spin the wheel? Um. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Wow. So it was basically like the entire thing was like. What it we was do. raw roulette. Yeah, it was raw roulette. Yeah, like what we do when every time Raw goes to Vegas now. Yeah, was the or entire raw. show. And every or time what we used to do. Every I time we, I wish they bring that back. Every time I referenced it, I kept kept wanting to call it a Dial of Doom, like uh, <laughs> like in Lucha Underground. So, uh, Matt, what's what's uh what's kind of some throwback uh, Halloween favorites that you've had over the years? Oh, they're so awful. Um, <laughs> well, they didn't say great ones. <laughs> one that pops to mind immediately is. Um, Eric Bischoff coming on to Stephanie dresses her father. <laughs> oh, jeez! <laughs> then the making out immediately afterwards. That's the a most favorite? uncomfortable thing. Yeah, because it's memorable and it's okay. awful. Um, in the same year on SmackDown, that was the year that Cena dressed up as Vanilla Ice and rapped, which mm-hmm. initially started his his uh, ascension. It, it saved his entire <laughs> career and altered the entire course of professional wrestling. Yeah. Who would have yeah. thought being what, Vanilla Ice helped What What he said. Hey, Vanilla Ice is playing tonight in Detroit, baby. Is he really? <laughs> he is. He is. I got, let me show you the what the ICP thing they're doing today. Oh, God. It it's, uh, looks like they just rented a warehouse, and they're doing like a mini gathering there. It's crazy. But anyways, that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. Although I think there is wrestling there. But uh, I have to get a report because I think a friend went. Um, but anyways, I had a point after this. Uh, <laughs> Somewhere. Oh, there, now there's a lot of debate over the, uh, the the spin the wheel. Uh, they said only the main event matches. Uh, BC Steel chimes in. Don't listen to him. Oh, he believes the only the main event was the spin the wheel, make the deal. I, I, I think that was on. Uh, I only remember I Sting versus Jake Roberts in a Cole Miners glove match. Also, oh. 1,000 points for the Shawshank Redemption Wrestling Crossover. Bravo, sir. Thank you. 
Someone appreciates me. Thank you, yes, BC Steel. Yes, but it's BC Steel, Steel, so it doesn't matter. Oh. Well, it's right. BC Steel. Yeah, I'll take it where I can get it. I am dressed like a giant freaking cowboy. He is. So. He is a giant wooden cowboy. Fair enough. Hey, uh, hey. He's Fabric Sorg. All right? <laughs> Just because his name's Woody doesn't mean he's a wooden cowboy. I thought he was wood. He's, he's all Fabric? He's, he's, only, he's only wood where it counts, Sorg. hi Oh. That's enough of that. Wait, 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 what's going on? Oh, I need to turn you back up. There you are. JD Jones in the chat room is also talking about Halloween at the Hardy's compound was cool last year. Yeah, was that when it was the entire Halloween or, or like the yeah. entire show or something? Something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah that was the whole thing because that, that's where they had like um, <coughs> Vanguard one with the holographic head and, <laughs> and uh, God, just that was that was. I would watch that again. I wouldn't watch anything else. I made my I made myself sad today for so many reasons because I'm watching the Chamber of Horrors match, and it reminded me of the match the Sting had with Abyss once, where there was like a casket that lowered from the ceiling, and there were like candelabras oh. on each of the posts. Oh yeah. But then I realized okay. I couldn't bring it up on the network. Like I feel. Uh, fun story. You know who is in that? Hmm. Mil Mortis. Oh right, because he was. Somebody else then. I, yeah, he was think somebody it was else. Judas, Judas, Judas Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. Messiah. Okay, yeah. so he's the one he took on, not Abyss in that, right? I. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think yeah. Man, he has so many gimmick matches. Yeah. yeah. You know that Chamber of Horrors match really just is the cornerstone for moments when people got away with murder and wrestling. Yeah. Like nobody I mean, questioned the fact do. that Abdullah the Butcher. Is just getting electrocuted to death in front of us. And but he got up. Uh, yeah. Kind of zombie fight. He but survived. He got up. You know. He they survived. they okay. didn't call it an electric chair. They just call it a, 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 a torture chair. Oh, never, that sounds better. That ne- may- <laughs> yeah, you know. Never mind that like there was fireworks and the and the mat caught on fire. No. Uh, <laughs> and also, <laughs> this was the first match of the night. <laughs> they opened with this match. I forgot that was the first match of the night. They, they were talking about this, and I'm just like, "How? Wait, did they just say that's the first match?" Because I'm watching like whatever milestone thing is popping up on the on the search, so it's you know clipped out by itself. And yeah, it's completely like we caught the ring of, on fire in the first match. Beat that. Also, the crowd was freaking into it. I want to oh, point sure. out, we all shit on that. Like, like WWE Network shits on that every time they talk about it. Um, but the crowd was down with that idea. Sorg, Sorg, I hate to tell you. It was in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee. It was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and the finish was putting uh, Abdullah in an electric chair. I get, okay, we're going to yep. move on from yep. this then. Yeah, let, all yeah, right, so yeah. back to John Cena yeah. being funny, you guys. Oh, yeah, it was actually called out in the chat room. Uh, Marcus, man, uh, uh, lets us know that uh, uh, Matt here actually did wrestle a match with a pumpkin on his head one time. I did. <laughs> How did that Excellent. happen? It was a Four Corners of Hell match at PWX against Gory. And he put a pumpkin on my head and proceeded to smash it in with a chair. Oh, geez. Now, at least you weren't like jumping onto a table like we saw last night with a pumpkin on your head. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no just my one of my good friends trying to concuss me with a pumpkin on my head. <laughs> Are you now afraid of pumpkins? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, any, other, any other Halloween moments you guys uh, recall? Um, well, I was going to say the, the John Cena thing, uh, um, but just, uh, the, I don't have a specific Halloween reference, mm. but like guys that kind of embodied Halloween, like I just love Hollow Wicked. Like yeah. he, he was one, he was my first favorite guy when I saw Chikara, mm-hmm. but just, uh, like, um, but we have, we have to talk about when Cesaro got pumpkin. I think it was last year or two years ago. I think it was a graphic for tonight's show. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was from uh 2014. Okay. So so it was a couple of years ago. It was Ambrose versus Cesaro. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that that was just that was fun. I mean, I don't know. The the Halloween's a weird animal because it seems like half of wrestling can be considered Halloween. Like we're kind of doing it the rest of the year with a lot of these characters, like with our Bray Wyatt's and our Undertakers and our Reaper Mackinards. Yeah, because I because I keep picturing like, 
oh, surely the boogeyman had a great Halloween moment, and nope, he was just the boogeyman all the time. You just, you just like, well, you know, boogeyman's gonna boogie. Um, I had nothing to go from that. <laughs> <laughs> I realized how bad that went. Uh, but like, I don't even think that, like the big buried alive matches or anything like that happened around Halloween. Mostly Survivor Series. But that's more Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was... Survivor... Maybe that was that just McMahon and Taker. Was that the only um, one of Survivor Series? Am I mistaken? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I just... So I think that's I think that's where the dead man, the American badass, went away, and right. the dead man came back. Right. Mm. Okay. Uh, Tina's pointing out that there's a pretty cool casket match between Judas Messias and Vampiro at a promotion in Puerto Rico. I'll have to look that one up too. Mm. So, hey, if you if you find a link to a YouTube or something, please drop that in the uh, uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group there, Tina. So, um, well, other than that, uh, there was uh, uh, some pretty big news. I know a lot of people were pretty sad to hear this week of the uh, uh, letting go of Emma, but she wasn't alone. Uh, and I know a name that that you brought up a lot here, Mad Mike, where you or or when we're talking about um, you know, especially Raws and things like that. Uh, Summer Ray also was officially let go. This is very sad for me, Sorg. This is it this was is like very... your, it's like your two favorite ladies. What, why is that sad for you? I love Summer Ray. Summer Ray was one of the most undervalued employees they have in WWE, in my opinion. Like, is she was she the greatest wrestler? No, but are half the people on the roster the greatest wrestlers? No. Like Summer Ray, everything Summer Ray was given, she made work. Mm-hmm. Like she was with Fandango, she was with Tyler Breeze, she was uh, with the BFFs in NXT. Like she's been all over the place, and they never gave her anything really good to stand out on her own. And it's it's really a shame. Like the fact, just the fact that she didn't even get like one last match just to, you know, remind bookers that hey, I'm gonna be fired soon, but you can book me. Yeah, versus like Emma, yeah. Emma, who was just involved with like with Oscar and, and a title match and everything like that too, right? They were saying they were saying Emma was at the uh, the Clippers game the night before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, promoting the show. Well, there's al- there's also a rumor was... going around that um, the reason Emma got let go is because of Nia Jax. Like that, uh, like the personal issues that supposedly she left a few weeks ago. That's what I. That's what I heard. And I'm like, if we got rid of Emma just to satiate Nia Jax, mm. that's a bad trade in my opinion. Well, I do want to point out that the chat room is actually jumping on with this. Uh, Darren Young was also part of the group to be released, mm-hmm. and Alex Miller is actually chatting. They in. never gave Darren Young a chance. As he, soon as he came out, they just they just tanked him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, Alex Miller is also pointing out that he hopes Emma goes to Lucha Underground, Darren Young to join Bullet Club, and Summer Rae to go to the Indies. I don't think the Darren Young Bullet Club thing is going to happen. No, that that seems a little outside. Yeah, that's not. I want to see Darren Young and Pit and uh, Pimpinella Escarlata in. Uh, I would. There I, you go. I could totally see Darren going to New Japan and taking the route of like Juice Robinson and oh, making a name yeah. for himself. But yeah, I don't think Bullet Club is a uh, no. Destined for him. Bullet Club is like guys that. You know, like like Cody Rose is a perfect fit for them. Mm-hmm. Guys that that are like, hey, I walked away and now I'm making my own shit right now. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So now there, and, and if anybody's, if you haven't seen a Juice Robinson, he's going by Juice Robinson now, right? Yeah. Uh, in New Japan, and he's even did a match <clears throat> I know a little bit ago on ROH TV. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a you wouldn't even know that's the same guy. His match with uh, Kenny Omega in the G1 recently was very good. Mm. Very good. Yeah, I think the closest thing they ever got to that in WWE was his uh, final match in NXT, the one with Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. oh yeah. But I mean, that was I mean that was a big Kevin Owens moment and everything. So, um, well, he was honestly a big part of the reason I think Kevin Owens got over because he accidentally broke Owens' nose. Mm-hmm. Helped. It helped. Mm-hmm. But it was interesting because right after that, I remember watching Wrestle Kingdom and it was just like that looks like you know. Whatever the hell he Parker. CJ Parker, Parker there Parker, at yeah. ringside. He was a young boy on, on the crew. Mm-hmm. And then next year, I just see him with just a tremendous match yeah. with, I think, mm-hmm. Cody Rhodes at the time, too. So, you know, so oh, we got a we got a guest out here saying hi. So, <laughs> um, but anyways, oh, no, what's he doing? He's asking us questions. 
<laughs> She's trick or treating. It's trick or treat. We got no candy. We got no candy, buddy. No, we don't got no candy. I got no Sorg, candy. For why it. don't right you out. have candy? Sorg, you're out of candy. The kids took it all. Sorg, your light is on. You need to have candy. That is Those true. We rules. did leave the light on. Also, it, it's also t- uh, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so trick or treat ended about three and a half hours ago. Hey, also, you know also, what? That was a lady. Maybe sword. some kids lived the nightlife. Sword. What's that? That was a lady. Was that a lady? Yeah. I can't tell through the window. I can't tell from this yeah. angle. Um, but anyways, I think it's really important not to skip over what Emma meant to the uprising and eventual <clears throat> decline, but the initial start of this women's revolution, mm-hmm. all the stuff her and Paige we're doing down in NXT was were really the starting point of all this. And for whatever reason, even when they got moved up, she got pushed to the back, even when Paige kept going. So I don't, I thought they really had something when they turned her, when she became a heel, she had the gloves and the f- friendship with Dana Brooke or whatever. She had a cool style. She was doing yeah. great when she went back to NXT. Right. Like right. Summer Rae was part of that too, because she was with the BFFs with Sasha and Charlotte. Right. Right. Um, JD. Like I, I saw one of the first things I saw of NXT was Sasha and Charlotte coming down to the ring with a cardboard cutout head of Summer Rae because she had been bumped up to raw. And I'm like, that's amazing. Mm. Uh, JD's talking about Summer Rae, how she got forgotten in this women's revolution. Uh, last time she was relevant was when she was a pseudo pseudo Lana. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah, I think I think she was kind of before the revolution. I mean, she kind of fit the former divas mold, didn't she? Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. That's the comment that I was going to make is I don't see that she's done anything really revolutionary um and to be honest i just assumed that she'd been let go a while ago because she was irrelevant yeah. as far as i could see um that was that was yeah. kind of my thought with it so okay I, i'm glad i'm not the only one who thought that no because like, i mean she's apparently injured but still yeah she had been around for a while yeah, yeah like I said, mike's been like saying hey bring him bring back summer to do this or that on raw yeah for, for a good while now so like she's been on that part of the radar well, here's here's the other problem that I'm seeing. Um, like, I'm glad that they're doing a lot more with the women, but there are only so many spaces on each of the rosters. Mm-hmm. Who are you going to give airtime to? Right. And in comparison... They got so many good girls right now. Yeah, and, and I think it's kind of a problem that you have so many people. How do you book it? How do you book it so that you know, the storylines and everything are, are coming together well. Mm. And if you have somebody who's been out like this for so long with injury or whatever, how do you bring them back in to be relevant? And I could see it being a legit issue. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Mike, mm-hmm. I know something really cool is coming close to home for you. You said you might be participating in soon. Oh, yeah. So explain to everybody what's going on in New York City for the, uh, what is this, 25 years of Raw? 25 years of Raw. Um, as far as I've been able to gather, it looks like there's going to be two different shows. Mm-hmm. One from the Manhattan Center and one in uh, Brooklyn and Barclays. I don't know what I'm going to go to. I'm going to try. I'll probably end up going to the Barclays Center just because that'll probably be easier and cheaper. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I'm very excited. So there's two different episodes of Raw being filmed? I think what they're going to do is do like probably part of Raw from the one location apart from the other. I don't know if they're going to WrestleMania to it. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Okay. Well, but you know what they need to do? And if they don't do this, they're 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 missing a great opportunity. Set your expectations, Mike. Um, They need to have a subway fight. Like in a restaurant? No, no, on the subway. <laughs> oh, okay. Not not on the subway. Not they oh, need not they need to, not in a subway restaurant. In the they subway. They need to have okay. one match spill out of the Manhattan Center. Oh go no. Go down into Penn Station. Oh no. Onto the A train all the way to and, Brooklyn. And and, and when, no 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 the and when they get into the A train. There's also Matt Bloom sitting there. Yes. Yes, and he's just sitting down, yes. and he and, yes. and you don't make a reference to it. No, no. He's just sitting down. No, 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 no. The hardcore he's people. Sitting, he's sitting down, dressed as Tensai. No, no, he's sitting down reading a a Japanese anime called 
Tensai. And then the Brooklyn mm-hmm. Brawler sitting across from him reading the newspaper. Yes. And there's also a um, a dancing hippopotamus on the train. Sure. Wait, why? Oh, hip hop hippo. hippo. Hip hop hippo. Why? I'm yeah. sorry. Oh. I should have okay. remembered that. But it's okay. That's all. It's okay. It's okay. Weird voice, Sork. Sork. <laughs> yes, I'm not the same person. Knows all these things. Uh, it's the upside down Sork. Is I am I the upside down Sork? You're definitely. Oh my god, you're that. the upside down Sork. Oh jeez. The Demosorgan. <laughs> yeah. how many stranger things references were on all the shows this week a lot <laughs> you can tell everybody watched stranger things on the planes and stuff traveling uh but anyways well that, that's gonna be cool i I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with that i hope they just kind of start the show in the manhattan center in the same fashion that they used well, to start the show you know what they they need to have like the old logo with mm-hmm. the big letters they need to start with the siren they need to have raw girls. Oh no! I don't think we're gonna do no, raw girls. No, no, Sorg. They, they need raw to have girls? raw girls. They need to have raw girls. I don't remember raw girls. Yes. No. Just, just for the simple nostalgia. That's all you need to do. And you know what? Make it equality. Have raw guys. Just, I'm serious. It just have Tyler, raw guys. It's just Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Wait. So I'm okay with that. So I'm it. honestly okay with that. Are they going to resurrect as, WCW is, to have the Monday Night Wars again? 11. Or it's the Ascension. No. It's the Ascension holding up signs and say, I like it raw. Just go to this bizarro mm. world where like WCW does come back and we just have a Nitro in another location. And... But we also need to have uh, someone being locked out of the building, um, a la Bobby Heenan. I don't know who that would be. Maybe Paul Heyman? Probably Byron Saxon. No, no, no. It should be Paul Heyman because he's like, I ran the Manhattan Center. Like, we know. We know, Mr. Heyman. We heard. We heard. You've done stuff. Yay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a different part of the Manhattan Center. No, he didn't do Manhattan Center. No, he he did the Manhattan Center. Absolutely, he did. I always think about Hammerstein, but. That's the same thing. Well, it's a different part of it, though. It. The hammers, there's a ballroom in right. the Manhattan Center. It's called the Hammerstein Ballroom. Right, right. And that's where. But yeah, we it's, know. All, it's all in the same building. All right. Uh, uh, lastly, I want to get a story in here for Riz. Yes. You, Riz. Did you, did you hear? Did you hear Triple H? Somebody asked Triple H. <laughs> Somebody apparently had asked Triple H. News yes, I did. On, on News 18 somewhere, and they're talking about Jinder Mahal's weighing in and everything. And and they asked they asked if uh, Ray Kali uh, would ever return yet again. And his quote, I, mean, I want to put this on. What, what did he say, Sor? He said, "What did what did he say?" He said, "Since I sound like different persons, just remember that. Just just make, pretend, he'll, he'll, he's he gonna, he'll get him go. Uh, Ray Kali is a legend in the industry. Hold on, mm. hold on." <laughs> Uh, is a legendary industry, and he is welcome to the WWE, and we look forward to his appearances by him in the future, if that is something he wants to do. He's going right, in the Hall so of Fame. So I have a question. Um, yeah. for Riz, Riz. Um, yes, yes. How much money did you pay Triple H to answer that question like that? Mm. Riz, Riz, how much money did it take you to impersonate Triple H on this News 19? You know, uh, do you have laryngitis too? And when you have laryngitis, you sound like yeah. Triple H. Yeah, <clears throat> and he also grows a foot. Like, like when Riz is laryngitis, yeah. like, well, you know, the great Kali's a legend. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That's exactly what I did. Like, okay. it was a phone interview. They didn't, they don't know who I was. They probably didn't even hear. They never heard of Triple H. No, nope, no. Nope. Here's just, a- Here's a picture with him. I was him. Here's a picture of him on this article. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nope. Photoshop. Just like, Photo. Just like, I, just like I've been saying year after year after year, Great Collie is going in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Are you inducted? There is going to there is going to be an induction speech by the Great Collie. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Wait, who, who? Let's play this game. I know we'll play it several times here, but who inducts the Great Kali? Oh, jeez. I think it has. I think it has to be Ginger. <laughs> yeah, those that do call him Ginger too. Ginger. Jeez. Um, Sorg in in the chat room. Brandon saying Mike is actually going to the show. We'll probably will stay. It's an hour and fifteen minutes watchable. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? For a 25th anniversary, I think that's going to be a really good rock. Mm. 
definitely. It fucking it fucking better be. There was we'll rumors that, that they're bringing the Undertaker back. Yeah. Yeah, but see, uh, the fact that it's gonna be two shows, I don't know if he's gonna be in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. Yeah, which one would he be at? He's probably gonna be at the Manhattan Center. Mm-hmm. Well, because you know, um, uh, all right, this is trivia for you guys. Who had the first match on Raw, and who had the first main event on Raw? Sean Michaels. Is it Sean and Owen? Sean Sean had the first match on Raw, and. I don't remember who Sean faced. I think it was even the jobber. Okay. It might have yeah. been the jobber. Um, but Taker may have had the first raw. Let's take her heart. Again, no. I want to say Damien Demento. Oh wow. Oh. oh wow. I'm not joking. I'm not joking. I think <laughs> it was right. Taker versus. There's Damian a Halloween Demento character. It's amazing. Um wow. Well, on that note, guys. Hey, uh, Hey, hey, Mike, do you want to talk about uh, Slice on Broadway for me, please? I don't know, Sword. You, ha- you have the announcer voice now. No, because it's starting to hurt a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, well, as as a uh, duly deputized mayor of pizza, sheriff of Pizza Town, um, I can hereby say Slice on Broadway is one of the best slices of pizza that I've ever put in my mouth. And I'm from New York, so you can take it from me. And Slice on Broadway provides you with the perfect pepperoni pizza for your podcasting partners in Pittsburgh. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Dude, didn't you even mi- pop a pee. You, mm. mi- you mixed it up a little bit. Wow. I did. Yeah. I did. However, I don't have the addresses, so you're going to have to say that. Oh, no. You could go get go check uh, them out. There's, oh, go ahead. Was it Carnegie PA? Yes. Oh, it's um, Carnegie. Carnegie bro, PA. That's no, why. No, no, no. Whatever. Carnegie. No. Yeah. Carnegie. Carnegie. Mm-hmm. How you get the Carnegie? Pizza, uh, pizza, pizza. Carnegie. There's Carnegie. There's um. Ah, oh, you said it. On Broadway. Uh, there's also the one in P- at PNC Park, coming to the Pittsburgh Pirates, where you can have your pepperoni pizza in Pittsburgh. Uh, and also, the newly opened East Livery location, which I have decided to go there at least once a week. And annoy Fantastic. people. Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm you trying kick to kick the door in. By the way, I'm trying to find the picture, but uh, uh, Dave Podner apparently uh, was going on Halloween as a uh, as a, a, a patron of Slice on Broadway that kicks the door down. Uh, <laughs> it was him kicking his own door down on his porch, holding his Slice on Broadway box. It was fantastic. Keep it up. But please, once again, do not actually kick down the doors of Slice kick on Broadway. Kick the door down. No, no, no. Please don't kick do that. No, 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 no. They have to pay for kick that. It. I'm, I'm sure they have insurance, but I don't want them to have higher insurance because of our, our, our fans. But uh, please, go patronize them. Tell them Sork sent you. No, no. Go tell them they sent you. Go, no. Pa- <laughs> as in a patron. Oh. A patron. Patronize. As in patronize <laughs> gotcha. a business. Not patronize the host of the show. Like like my bad Mike is doing right now. <laughs> it's just no Larry Mysterio. Um booyaka, booyaka. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> All right. So uh seriously kick down the door. Dude. No, check about sliceupbroadway.com. Don't kick the door down. PGH underscore slice on the Twitter. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some lemon tea and we'll be back with the with the big question. <laughs> Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I am Cowboy Mad Mike, a.k.a. Woody. Um, we, we, we have come back, and it is time for the big question, and I'm taking the lead because Sorg is currently guzzling lemon tea. Oh, um, yes. 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 Uh, so as as I'm not sure if you guys could tell, it's Halloween. What? Um, it, it, this is Halloween. This is Halloween. Yeah. So our big question this week is: If you could dress up as any wrestler, which wrestler would you dress up as for Halloween? Ah, so who, who who's got one so far? I'm still trying to think of who I'd pick. Do you want to share the one from the chat room? We should share the one from the chat room. It'll, um, it'll definitely set a tone. <laughs> Wheels in the chat room immediately. Um, I don't, don't want to say jumped on this question, but he immediately got to this question and said he would dress up as draws. Go <laughs> wheels. Oh, wheels. Oh, wheels. 
I just <laughs> I just hope you have your tattoo kit with you. That's all I'm saying. Oh. I, I want to see wheels in that weird mohawk thing he was wearing. I want to see wheels wearing the LOD shoulder pads. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, honestly, Sorg, I'm going to throw this out there just because we we watched it walk down the street in front of the studio. Oh, tonight. that was the best. They had a little kids parade come through. And yeah. it was so adorable because the kids parents were around them and they were holding like ring posts with a wrestling ring essentially walking down the street. And the kids were dressed as John Cena and Bailey in the middle of the ring. Walking down oh the my street. God. Was it was the, the cutest was thing. Was that ever. the kid that yelled at you can't see me? Yes. Yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. It's like at the end of the parade. I did a Facebook live. I'll, I'll try to share it to the, the, the group. It's on my personal page. And it's like right at it's like the last yes, couple it's, of kids that last, came by. It's the end of it. It was it was the cutest thing ever. We were like, Yes, Lord Wrestling the fans, it's adorable. I love it. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. But the fact that they built like a ring like that, just yeah. like and the and the parents just carried it around them. Yep. That was the, that was the coolest part. That was so good. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. That's absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> what about you, Larry Mysterio? I'm gonna go with Captain Lou Albano. You would go as Captain Lou. Nice. For, for, for no reason. The in rubber. Particular. Just, I mean, just the hat and the gallon of fruit punch and vodka and a cigar. Does that mean that we get to put <laughs> rubber bands in your beard? Sure. Why not? Sweet. Oh man, you'd make a good Lou Albano. I think so. Are you in your like stomach hanging out and stuff? Yeah. Like. He Mutilator was, he, Larry. He was, he was not good about having shirts no. that fit. Nope. If I recall. So. Nope. I think he took the Foley route where he only had one set of clothes through his entire career. Mm, yeah, that could be. That could be. Um, you also need like to have a, a boombox playing girls just want to have fun. <laughs> or or the theme from the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Well, that's the cro- that's kind of the crossover. Like you can just kind of transition into that later, right? That's fair. So and you don't even need a good Mario costume for that, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so what about you, Matt? Probably naked Midian. Naked Midian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're just gonna walk around with a fanny pack and bad tattoos. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I got the bad tattoos. Okay. All right. right <laughs> around the... I don't so want to call them bad there. tattoos, but I'll do all it. right. They're all right. Mine. He's just like I'm halfway there. You just gotta <laughs> cut a hole in a fanny pack and. Oh geez. Trick or treat some people. Trick. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't know. I'm really feeling the Zenzo thing right now. I need to work on the dance like Chad's doing. But uh <laughs> Um I I know most people expect me to probably say Kevin Owens. Because, as we all know, I am the American Kevin Owens. There is a fan that did that did a dress up. He does a great Wyatt. Paul. Okay. Uh, Paul. Is, I think he's in our group. Uh, I've seen his wide in person, and he does a Kevin Owens. And somebody had let him do like an entrance. I don't know if it was like, like at an indie promotion or something. They let him do the entrance or something. <laughs> Mike, so that's awesome. He if, does pretty okay. If I had to pick one for you right now, I would say uh, Bob Orton. Cowboy, no, Cowboy I'm not putting Bob. my arm in a cast. Mm. I'm not doing that. Cowboy, but, um, Cowboy Bret Hart. Uh, Cowboy the, Bret non, Hart. the non, <laughs> no, I will never dress as Bret Hart. Bill Watts? Bret Hart can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I poked a bear. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> always an Owen guy, always a Shawn Michaels guy. Fair enough. Oh, jeez. But um, if I if I had to pick some, a little bit more new school, Marty the Moth. <laughs> okay. Right. Marty good, the Moth. Good. All right. That's who I would dress as. I get to carry around a little lunch, a little lunch box. I get to not know how wings work properly, and ladies love it. <laughs> Case closed. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm guessing. I don't know. All right. Have, have we gotten everybody in studio? I guess I didn't really because the chat room is on fire. Who would you yes. dress I, as? I, I, I honestly, I'd love to do a Pentagon Junior. That'd be a good. Get one. Up. That'd be fun. I think, that, I think that'd be a lot of fun. Well, yeah. Alex Miller would join you in your your Pentagon oh, Junior yeah? because he will dress as Johnny Mundo. Oh go yeah, go to slice on Broadway. Okay. Do the posse and say, "I will take that pizza to slam down." Didn't I wear like a fuzzy? Uh, I wore a white beater and a fuzzy shirt and pretending I was. Uh, I don't know what was he, John Morrison, maybe at the time. Yeah, something it, like that. It didn't work out well. No, it was crazy. No. Um, J D Jones would be a very malnourished Yokozuna. I like that. Oh. Okay. Uh, Tina mm-hmm. Keys is going to go with an easy one. Bray Wyatt. Lady Bray? Lady Bray. That's, that's a pretty cool. Or, I mean, it's basically the same thing these days. Sister Abigail. True. Bray, Bray oh, Wyatt my was, God. Tina's that, sister that Abigail. That was just there a you go. Tina is sister Abigail. We should have known this all along. Listen, don't do drugs, kids, and 
tell that to Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Are you and stay away from the Jitus? Wait. Are we? Are we? Are we? Like, does it feel like that we saved Bray Wyatt's career? I think so. By him not doing the Sister Abigail thing in, at the pay per view, you're assuming it's still not happening. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, at least for the moment. I, well, I don't know. Like, He's, he survived the House of Horrors match. Yeah, and I didn't hate the House of Horrors match. It just I couldn't see it. No way. Yeah, but see, the thing is, we may have saved Bray Wyatt's career, but. At the same time, we have also ended Finn Balor's. Oh yeah, yeah. Because now he's just getting like nerfed by Kane every week. Guys, hmm. Dave mm. Podner has a really fun, interesting one. What's that? Mm-hmm. He would go as Mr. Sacco. Yep. Oh Ooh. wow. Who's gonna yep. st- Who's gonna stick his hand up his ass? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wants to be Mick Foley? <laughs> okay, this is not the time to s- to read the comment from Tina. I did spend some time in the South. <laughs> So she can pull the act. Sorry, Tina. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunate um, placement. Yeah. Uh, Brandon Minot says he would go as Bobby Roode and standing on a spinning wheel. Yes. Oh, my God. I'm. All right. So, Sorg, I think when I go at WrestleMania, I'm going to bring a Roomba. I'm going to stand. I'm going to pose as Bobby Roode and just maneuver myself on Bourbon Street on a Roomba with my arms out singing glorious. Can you ride a Roomba? Are the Roombas tough enough to like carry a person? Sure. Wait, Why sure. not? Wait. I'll reinforce it. Larry. Yes. You could make that Roomba reinforced, couldn't you? Sure. See? Work on we're that. good. Let's work I on that. can reinforce anything. Yeah. See? We're good. There you go. Jeez. <laughs> just say not save just delayed from the crash this day. If, if, if I've seen if I can see someone riding a flying Nimbus at Comic Con. We can definitely do a, oh, yeah. a rotating glorious platform for Bobby Roode. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Alex Miller in the chat room says he wants to dress as Sammy Callahan. No, you really don't, Alex. You really don't. <laughs> you really just, don't. just gonna, no. Uh, M- Missy, who would yours be? Did you say one? I did not say one, primarily because I don't know. Hmm. Like, okay. Really... All right. Has I'm anyone kidding. here I, ever? I know. I know. I would go as like '90s Sting. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Yes, surfers thing. I love it. Yes. By the way, I gotta give. Uh, it's gotta in, spike the hair. It's in our group. I gotta give shouts to our a friend of the show, Magnum CK, who went as the ultimate lawyer. He did. I saw the yes. pictures. Pretty <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Yes. What? Uh, well, here's another question. What wrestlers have you gone as in the past? Uh, Batman. No, that's not, I just I wait, just as Johnson. Wait, wait, wait that is a that is a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. In Pittsburgh, technically. Yeah. That, that's Batman with two T's. That's right. <laughs> I dressed yeah. as John Cena one year on a on a year where I really didn't feel like doing anything. <laughs> no, just... I I, lit- I I went to Home Depot. I got um a a master lock and a link of chain, and then just wore a basketball jersey. And I'm like, yep, I'm John Cena. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna say that you were. Uh... What was his name? Masters or something like that that had the master lock. The master lock. Masters. masters. Yes. Oof. I oh, unintentionally no, no. I'd, I'd have to work out a Russo lot once. harder to be Chris Masters. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> I, I was Undertaker one year, like back in the day, like when we had with the, with the long hair. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know. I probably didn't have long hair at the time. Um, but we would get gray trash bags and and you know put them around my legs, and that was like the big boots that he had at the time. Nice. So, and I can't remember what we made the rest of it out of. But uh, it was a pretty sweet homemade costume. I was Jeff Hardy one year. Oh, yeah? If Jeff Hardy looked like Lord Christmas. <laughs> huh. and, and, and I know I bring this up every Halloween, but my sister uh, once dressed as Luna Vachon. Nice. For Halloween. That'd be, that'd be a fun one. It was awesome. They, uh, if I remember, we grabbed a long blonde wig and my mom shaved off half of it and drew the spider veins on it. Nice. It was it was a really really awesome costume. Yeah. I gotta see if, if I can find the picture. I'll post it up in the mayhem uh, page again. Uh, um, our go, chat room is our chat room is chiming in here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Miller dressed as John Moxley from CZW. Uh, Tina Keys went as Road Warrior Hawk when she was five. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, J D Jones not too long ago he was J T G of Crime Time. Wasn't a good night. No, <laughs> no. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, J D. You can't just say that you dress as JTG if you didn't if you just didn't answer your phone all night. 
Oh. oh. No. <laughs> Jokes. This this one <laughs> this one has a follow up question. Aaron went as Rey Mysterio. How did he do a six one nine? Oh, from his wheelchair. Well, no, it was Rey Mysterio when he had surgery five times in his left knee. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that that got a little awkward. Uh, yeah. I ain't a uh, Mike. I I know we talk about Drew Gulak is a, a pretty amazing thing with his slideshow lately, right? Oh uh-huh. yeah. Did you uh, did you see the video that was posted on the group of Drew Gulak uh, as Sasha Banks? Wait, that was wait. him. Hold wait, what? <laughs> Hold on, where 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 is this magic? It's the streamable app uh, uh, link that somebody. I don't know what they're doing. They're doing some kind of costume contest. I do believe that is Drew Gulak as Sasha Banks. Drew Gulak. Uh, oh, full on. on Sasha Banks. Uh, here, I'll, I'll hold this up for you on your camera too you, so you can see was, some of that. That was Drew Gulak. Oh, is that the streamable thing? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to watch. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Tina says it was the live costume contest today. Yeah. Um, oh. Sweet sassy molassy. Meanwhile, that is Sasha Banks as as the giant baby. Uh, no, no, as Seamus, or I'm sorry, as Cesaro. And there's a there's a Seamus like at, on a crotch doing the pose. Oh, so yeah, and then this happened. Oh uh, my god. Uh, he might be using some of her ring gear. He is, he absolutely is using her ring gear. Yeah, yeah, it, that's what's um, happening right there. By the way, I love that a video looks actually kind of okay when I just hold my phone up to this camera right now. So, um, oh. so, so, get that stuck in your head, Mike. Um, <laughs> you know, er- earlier this week I said Drew Gulak was one of my favorite wrestlers. Yeah. Um, that opinion has not only not changed, but actually just improved because, as someone who has dressed as a woman for Halloween. That takes balls. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Missy. Thank you. I'll be there here all go. week trying there to be. There you go. On. There you go. Um, hey, Dave, Dave posted this. Says, so this is how we make two hundred five better. Which PowerPoint slide is it on? Is this on? So um, that's actually on the 69th one, I believe. I believe so. Hey, if we ever if they stop interrupting him, we'll find out for sure, right? So uh, yeah. Uh, on that point. Because I have no voice left. Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, shit. I made some. I learned that some say Drew Gulak started the women's revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, Larry? Um, I learned um, Heath Slater's got a mean streak uh, with a kendo stick. Well, yeah, he was gonna, he was he, was, a, he was lighting them up with that kendo stick. They were on a they were in a lot of frustration out of there in that match last yeah. night. Yeah, yep. yeah. I, I also missed. I'm so sad because I came. I, something happened. I had to reset the stream, and they were like already Chad too bad and Tex Ferguson in the match. And I get didn't get to see the entrances yet. So that's or I didn't realize that Rhino was Mrs. Claus. Oh yeah, they were Mister and Mrs. Claus. Oh yep. boy. They got kids, or at least they got elves, right? Oh, God. So. <laughs> they got elves. They need Sorry. that job. Yeah, that's right. I learned that Halloween is a magical time for just about everything. Uh, they have characters, and they have really fun characters in wrestling when it happens to fall on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What about you, Matt? Uh, I learned by watching SmackDown in particular tonight, it was more of a reminder that uh, pay-per-views don't matter anymore. (laughs) When you end a SmackDown with Kevin Owens versus Shinsuke Nakamura, every show's a pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I I say pay-per-views are are Saturday night's main event, right? Yep. At this point. At this point, they are. So, um... I, I learned that uh, despite, you know, our complaints about Jerry Lawler and announcing her on his uh, kickoff shows and things like that, Jerry Lawler is still pretty cool. Um, got to got to shoot him uh, at the uh, high stakes show mm-hmm. with IWC this past week. Right. Uh, awesome thing they did with Jackson Argos. It should be up soon if it's not already the at least the birthday party segment. There's plenty of pictures out there right now. Right. 
uh, with him, and uh, he's always uh, uh, pretty. This is probably about the third time I've got to shoot a match with Jerry Lawler, mm-hmm. and uh, it's always it's always a treat. Uh, he's always really awesome with the fans. I was talking with a a lot of the fans about um, their experiences going to get um, uh, uh, autographs and pictures with him and everything like that, and he's just. One of those guys that just always super super cool to everybody. Mm. So, um, also heard great things about Jim Ross, who was in town last week too for a book signing. Mm. Um, so sadly, not only about like I guess a hundred people were there. So, but uh, but well, I, who knows who who promoted it too? I say so. who I must not have been well advertised. I didn't hear about it. it I, I think it was. All I didn't even see it on his Twitter or anything. He was. I know he was on Mark Madden's show earlier that right, day. Right, right. Okay. That was about it. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't like a WWE promoted thing or anything. No, like no, that, that was so. it was like all independent. I think that's that's one of the big things there. So, but but always cool to see uh, th- those kinds of things and how how cool they are uh, for those things. And and again, like I I love hearing after a Jerry Lawler match, everybody's always surprised that he does that much, right? Right? Like I I feel like he did more in the match this weekend than the ones I've seen with him before the heart attack, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, really cool to see the, that, and he's still you know a great professional out there and everything too. Mm. So. That's what I got. So, you know, do you, do you want to know what Dave Podner learned? What did he learn? Mm-hmm. People can live in a garbage truck for weeks. <laughs> Super True. shredder, man. Super shredder. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> people throw away like Twinkies and pizza all the time. Got plenty to eat. True. Yeah. Uh, so. That's why yeah. all those boxes were empty. Yep. Here's, here's my question after that segment. What did he smell like? <laughs> No, no, no. The question was, what did he smell like before he went in? It he smelled much like North. He smelled like North Carolina. Yes. But here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know. <laughs> what does North Carolina I, smell like? <laughs> I want to know who drove that garbage truck from the site of TLC, which was, I believe, in Minneapolis, to Raw last night, which definitely no. was not in Minneapolis. No, no, no. First it was of all, Rikishi. Is, yeah, it was Rikishi. Yeah. He did it for The Rock. I did it <laughs> for The Rock. And also, who painted it a different color? Yeah, no kidding. Wow. It's it's like it's like they dumped him from one truck into another. No, it, it's, it's 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 I I think the idea was he was dumped out of a out of the truck into like. A recycling center or or the dump or something and then it was loaded back into a truck well here's like i i feel here's like now you're just here's my question there. Three. when have you ever seen a dump truck or a garbage truck yeah across state lines well, i like don't follow garbage trucks that closely. they don't cross state lines because okay. usually it's a like don't, don't centralized throw your trash area my, don't throw your trash in my backyard yeah it's not it's not that. It's just like you have your general areas that do garbage. So, like the city of Pittsburgh, we have our own trash people. Uh, and the litter getter. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, wait. What? <laughs> we got the litter getter. We do have the litter getter. We got the litter getter. What? <laughs> Wait, hold on. You can't just so, bla- you can't just blast past us. The fuck is a litter getter? Uh, You're it, as confused about gets, this as Missy was about North Carolina. It gets the litter. Uh, I just oh wow. All right, we're we're moving on from this. Yes. JD Jones also learned that Rey Mysterio won't come back to WWE until Sin Cara gives him back his eye contacts. <laughs> oh yeah. Anybody else freaked out by you being able to see Sin Cara's eyes lately? Yes. It's I'm not, more freaked out listening to him talk. It's not gonna yeah. do anything. Listening but. to him try to talk. I had a dream that he got unmasked on on SmackDown and then it went back Good to Mexico. You dream some of the weirdest things. Oh, it's been real weird lately. It's this medication. But wishful thinking? I don't know. <laughs> oh man, do something with him. I mean, Sin Cara's like doing a lot right now. Yeah. No, it, like, if you if you demask Sin Cara, he could not be called Sin Cara anymore. Would he just be Cara? Yeah, he would just be Cara. <laughs> Because Sin Cara means with no face. Yeah. So you would just be with face. With face. You would just what? be face. Oh, we, David, don't, we don't David, know what it's like under there. David or David loves Con to Cara. Give people like, one name. Yeah. So, Con I mean. Cara, yes. With face. Or Un Cara, one face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there more? Uh, from we, the we also, uh, Bobby, Bobby said that Michael, Michael Cole, uh, he learned that Michael Cole saw. Ghost. Wait, where? <laughs> that, that's what Bobby learned. Right. Bobby learned that Michael Cole saw a g- 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 ghost. Was that the sound he made when Heidenreich raped him? 
Uh, I no, I believe the sound he made was just him pissing down his own leg. Is that? Because yeah. that's what you do. Also, right. Brandon, Brandon learned that you uh, that you don't be late to work and you can't leave early, or else you'll have consequences. And that's fairly true, that's unless true. of course you're a John Cena. Are we going from what we learned in wrestling to life at this point? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. This is... If you can want. Yeah. Okay. Wrestling is um... life. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. All right. On that one. Oh, this is where I close the show. Yes, oh, hey, guys. Yeah. Thank, you, Matt. You, Sorg. Thank you, Matt Connor, for joining us here tonight. Of course. Kind of a weird night here, but I mean, no, you know, not less, more weird than normal, oh. but. Yeah, it's almost midnight. I'll go home and get back in my cloak. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Just in time, right? Back to normal. Where can people find you online? Uh, at Reaper Matt C. Uh, basically anywhere you can type in at it's reaper Matsy on most things and uh yeah uh november 11th rise elite eight check it out be there at connellsville good stuff down got going on down there oh, yeah. uh you still doing the podcast um yeah uh life got in the way for a little bit that i had got distracted but i am gonna gear up i've got one in the tank that i need to edit and put up but yeah i should be back on the wagon soon playing episodes wrestling with death on your itunes or wherever you get your podcast yep there's still plenty up there so you can go catch up while i'm playing catch up awesome and of course we have a great interview with matt uh on indie mayhem show from a couple of months ago actually Mm -hmm. uh, that i heard great feedback from so please go check that out if you want to learn about more about him and please come back tomorrow for marcus mann uh, yes. I'm so excited to listen to you and Marcus. <laughs> so excited. It'll be interesting because we're going to have Marcus and then we're going to have Justin Idol right after too. Right. So it's going to be a fun night. Hopefully I have a voice by then. But thankfully the interviews have it's, just let him. Marcus work. will talk. For yeah, I, stuff, don't, I don't even have you to. You don't got to worry yeah, about I'll it. I'll just hold up a sign with the question. Yeah, like, like, hey. Oh, yeah, that. Uh... <laughs> is that his, your impression of him? Yeah. Uh, fucking pretty good. Pretty good. Mm. All right. Uh, then, uh <laughs> Larry, Larry Mysterio has no social media, really. He has people for that. I have people. For you that. have people for that, of course. Comes with the mask. Comes with the mask. <laughs> Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitter. Absolutely, you can also find me at Al's Toy Barn. <laughs> Al's Toy Barn, <laughs> and also follow my weekly YouTube show, Woody's Roundup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and check out over there, SorgatronMedia.com and all the other great shows at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and our friends, our partners at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of great shows going up, including High Stakes 2. She'll be coming up uh, probably by the end of the week here on uh, Digital Download, uh, as well as a bunch of other great, great stuff that I should sound way more excited about, but I can't possibly physically do that right now. But uh, thank you, everybody, in the chat room has been listening to my weird voice all night. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem Show out. Wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time, then attack. Don't this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.